You know, believe it or not, one of the main reasons I opened this clinic is because of depression, anxiety, and stress. You know, just because we're a hormone replacement therapy clinic and we help people lose weight, change their lives, I actually didn't even realize I was getting into the mental health business. But the reality of it is, um, honestly, I've struggled with depression, and high levels of stress my whole life. And uh, fortunately, I can admit it now. One of, the, one of the problems, especially in men, is we're not allowed to admit depression or anxiety. We're supposed to be alpha. We're supposed to be tough. We're not allowed to have vulnerabilities. We just need to man up, right, and just keep going. But it's a serious, serious issue. What I've come to realize is that the majority of the problems, they're not what people think they are. And they're directly connected to mental health. Three and a half years ago, many of you know that I, I had a weight problem and I've had it my whole life. I, I call myself a big, strong, fat guy. I always loved the gym. It's been a passion of mine since I was young. But, but as I mentioned, there's been times when I'd, I'd lose the weight, but I'd gain it right back, just like everybody else. And, and it wasn't until I inadvertently discovered that my problems weren't related to food addiction or, or laziness. It was related to mental health. And like I said, it, it's, it's a stigma, especially among men in this country, that we have to be alpha. We, we, we're not allowed to be vulnerable. We need to just, what do they say, man up. And it never works. So I started studying biochemistry and, and, and endocrinology and metabolism. And inadvertently, I discovered that it's really all just symptoms. And that's what I see all day as guys come in with, and women, with with. They're overweight, they have pains, they have aches, they have low energy, they have low libido. And ultimately, when you really start digging, it's all just a symptom of mental health. And, and specifically, stress and cortisol. So cortisol is the, the primary stress hormone. They call it the fight or flight hormone, and stress is the killer. So it's been said that the number one hormone responsible for aging is cortisol. But it's also, as I've said in other videos, it's the number one hormone responsible for visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat in and around our organs, which actually has four times as many cortisol receptors as, say, belly fat. So basically, they call a, a beer belly, which is really not a beer belly, it's a stress belly, because the introduction of stress, the cortisol hormone, combined with beer, or, or food or calories, it, the first thing it does is it deposits fat in the liver and inside the, the, the belly. So I wasn't able, as you can see, you know, this is, this is me right here three and a half years ago at, at 300, near 298 pounds. Uh, I was able to, to lose the weight actually very quickly. These are my 90 day photos. I lost that in 90 days. It was the hardest thing I ever did. But in the process before and after, I learned a ton about the science of hormones. And so what I've been able to do is obviously, that was three and a half years ago, and I've been able to maintain my weight, healthy lifestyle for, for three and a half years. And we can get more into this, but I, I don't have to eat like a freak. I can eat pizza occasionally. I can have beer. I can, I can eat normal. No one's going to hang out with me and go, oh, he's only concerned with his body. No, I've learned the science of hormones. And a big, the, the biggest one that we have to deal with in this clinic and your lives is actually cortisol, how to manage your stress properly. Obviously, the natural side, the behavioral health side is super, super important. What's interesting is we, we like to medicate our problems, which again, which is why they call it a beer, beer bellies, because they're medicating a problem, a mental health problem with, with alcohol. But we also medicate with food, with, with, with sex, with, with scrolling on your phones. I mean, endless. When, when you are searching uh, you know, for hours and hours on end on social media, you're actually getting a hormonal, aka dopamine, response. All the stimulation received is just little little bits of dopamine and it feels good. And it, I like to call it medication. So most of the problem, and depression and anxiety, it's a very slippery slope because there's clearly a problem and we wanna fix that problem. And so our brain actually tells us to do, hormonally tells us to do the things that are gonna make us feel good right now, but they'll actually make the problem worse tonight or tomorrow or down the road. And so one of the things on the behavioral health side, we gotta help people get into the right habits, medicate with the right things, medicate with the gym, medicate with good books, inspiration, positivity, activity, playing in the yard with the kids. But, but unfortunately, the hormonal response is to eat, to drink, 
to sleep too much, to procrastinate our problems, those are actually stronger than the urges to do the right things. One of the biggest problems of cortisol in men and women is it actually binds to testosterone receptors, robbing you of your testosterone. Well, testosterone is an amazing, it's the vital hormone. It's what makes us men. But guess what? Testosterone is present in women. Testosterone for men and women, it keeps us asleep, for example. You're waking up in the middle of the night. It may not be just a pee. Chances are, if you were in a deep enough sleep, you would not have woken up. It's one of many, many factors that testosterone is responsible for. Uh, I can go on and on. There's another video on testosterone. We'll link it to this video. But the biggest thing is we have to learn to manage our cortisol. We can do that with, with some tips, tricks, and hacks in the clinic, testosterone therapy, hormone replacement therapy, peptide therapy, but you have to employ the behavioral health side. You have to medicate with the right things. One of the important things I'm gonna tell you is to come to grips with the fact that most everyone, probably you, deals with depression. It's, it's so much more common than real. I, I would venture to say that the majority of people are dealing with depression and it's not a black and white issue. It isn't like, oh, I'm depressed, I'm not depressed, I'm depressed, I'm not depressed. No, there's levels. It's kind of like a thermostat in a car and you're watching it get hotter and hotter and hotter. We all deal with some level of depression and it's related to the stresses in our lives. Those stresses in your lives, AKA cortisol, they're destroying you, they're aging you rapidly. They're, they're making you deposit visceral fat. They're making you uh, slow down your metabolism. As you can see, it's a very slippery slope. So deal with the problems, both behavioral health and with the science. Employ the science, research, do your, do your, reach out to us if you have any questions. As always guys, like, subscribe, share, hit the notifications so that when we put out contact just to help, you can receive it. Thank you.